Hey everybody, this is gonna be a quick video on slope intercept form in the real world and applications of using the slope intercept form equation. So we're all familiar with the slope intercept form equation now of y equals mx plus b, where we know m is our slope and v is our y intercept. Well, in real world problems, these have some specific meanings. Specifically, slope is our rate of change. So it's how much the rate of something is changing, usually over time. Or for example, if we were looking at like someone making goals in a soccer match, the rate would be the number of goals every match. The rate is changing every match that happens. The y-intercept is usually in these real world, real world problems, our initial value, okay? It's our starting point. It's the place where the problem begins. So let's dive in and look at some of these problems. We're gonna start with this one. Your family is driving from Cincinnati to St. Louis. The graph relates your distance from St. Louis in miles and travel time in X hours. Okay, so what we're showing is we are starting in Cincinnati. So we are starting, we'll put a little stamp here. We're starting here in Cincinnati. We're gonna end up here in St. Louis, okay? So we're gonna drive however we need to drive here to get to St. Louis, okay? And what this graph is showing us is the y-axis is representing our distance from St. Louis, and the x-axis is representing how long we have been traveling in hours. So we're going to start with question number one, what is the starting point? And we should all know that the starting point is another word for our y-intercept. So what is our y-intercept here? We can see this clearly crosses at 360. B here is 360. This is the point 0, 360. So our x value is 0, our y value is 360. What does this point mean? Well, let's look at what the x value is. x value is our time or our hours I've traveled. And y value is our distance from St. Louis, is our distance in miles from St. Louis. So what this means, what our starting point means, is that we are starting. We are starting 360 miles away from St. Louis. Our distance we're going to have to travel is going to be 360 miles, okay, from, left off from St. Louis, okay. Our next question is what is our rate of change? So what is the distance changing by as the hours of our trip progress? what is the distance changing by? Well, we know rate of change is another word for the slope. So we have this point is 0, 360. Let's pick another point. So I'm going to look. I see this is another very good point to choose. It is 2, 240. So 2 and 240 is our next point. OK. So. We're going to find the slope or the rate of change by using our slope formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And we're going to label our points x1, y1, x2, y2. So we're going to do 240 minus 360 divided by 2 minus 0. So I'm going to get negative. Uh, 120 divided by 2, which is negative 60. So our slope here is negative 60. And y'all, it makes sense that it's negative because this line has a negative slope. Think of Mr. Slope Guy. This would be like his negative eye, okay? Not his positive eye, not his undefined nose, not his zero mouth, but his negative eye right here, okay? So what does this mean? Well, it's a negative 60, and let's talk about change in y. We call it delta y over delta x. So the change in y is the change in miles from St. Louis, and the change in x is the change in hours. So what this is, is negative 60 miles each hour. So what does that mean? That means each hour, our distance, from St. Louis, 
running out of room. Decreases by 60. Decreases by 60. So each hour, our distance from St. Louis is decreasing by 60. So that is our rate of change. We're changing by 60 miles every hour. So yes, we're traveling a positive distance of 60 miles, but as far as our distance from our destination, our distance from our destination is getting closer and closer and closer. So if we know now that B is 360 and M is negative 60, we can take that and we're going to write a new equation for this. So our equation for this line would be that our slope was negative 60 and our y-intercept was 360. So we should definitely be able to identify slope and y-intercept from a real world scenario. Then we should be able to answer some questions. My first question says, what would your distance from St. Louis be after three hours? Well, three hours is an X value because hours is on our X axis. So we'd find three hours until we hit our graph. And then we go over until we hit our Y axis. We can see that after about three hours, I am about 180 miles from St. Louis. Okay. All right, next is how many hours will it take you to reach St. Louis? So what this is asking me is when will my distance, when will my distance be zero? When will the distance be zero? So we know the Y value is zero when we are at St. Louis, because the y-axis is showing me my distance from St. Louis. So where is the y value zero? Well, right here. This means I've reached my destination. So at this point, six, zero, I've traveled for six hours and now I'm zero miles from St. Louis. So that means I have reached my destination. So six, zero. So it'll take us six hours. And lastly, what is the total distance you will drive? Well, if we think about this, if we start at 360 miles away and we ended up zero miles away, that means we must have traveled 360 miles to get to our destination. That makes sense, everybody? Okay. If you need to, you can pause this, but we're gonna take it a minute. We're gonna look at three more quick examples. All right, this one says Colby puts $100 in a saving account. The graph shows how the amount in the account would increase over the next 10 years. What does the y-intercept represent? So again, we're looking, where does this cross the y-axis? Well, at this point, this is the point zero, 100. We know that x values is time, and the Y values are dollars. So what this must mean, if the Y intercept is at zero, 100, this means that at year zero, he has started with $100. So it's our initial value. It's our starting point of how much he is saving, okay? Right, let's do another one. So what I would like you to do is, hopefully this is the last one, let's read this question. Dion pays a fixed fee plus an hourly rate to rent a boat. The table below shows how much Dion paid for the boat. What was Dion's hourly rate to rent the boat? So I would like you to pause this, try it, and then unpause it to check your answer. So hopefully you took a moment and you paused it to try this. So what is this one asking for? It's asking for an hourly rate. Here's the key word, rate. We know rate means slope. It's asking for the slope of this situation. Well, we know we find slope from two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Well, guess what? This table is gonna give us those points. Hours is gonna be our X and amount paid is gonna be our Y. Y'all, time is usually like nine out of 10 times, time is usually the X value. 
So that's something important to remember. So we have points here. We've got, we'll just use the first two, 127 and 239. So 127 and 239, and we're gonna plug those into the slope formula. So we're gonna do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is 39 minus 27 divided by two minus one, which is 12 minus one, which is 12. So what this means is the hourly rate is $12 per hour. So our rate of change cost is $12 per hour to rent a boat. Okay. That is what our rate of change is and what it means. Now we didn't find the initial value here. If you wanted to, you could find the initial value, work backwards. I'll go ahead and tell you if you pause it and you want to try it, go ahead and do that now. If you did it and you work backwards, you would find out that the initial value was 0 0.15, which meant that it was 15 dot B was 15 to just rent the boat in the first place. Okay, and our last question we're gonna do is this one. So this one I've already given you the equation. The equation below shows the cost to attend the affair, the fair if you ride our rides. So what we see here is we have cost equals five plus 1.75 R. So I would like to rewrite this as C equals 1.75 R plus five and show you guys that this is in slope intercept form they just wrote it differently. And the other thing they did is they, um, they swapped out C and Y and R and M. So what they're trying to show you here is that cost is your Y value. And then your X value is the number of rides you are going to ride. Okay. So what is the Y intercept? And what does it mean? Well, if you line this up, you see the Y intercept B is five. So what that means is you are paying $5. Sorry, go hear my whiny puppy dog. $5 just to enter the fair. In real life, it's way more expensive than that. <laughs> just to enter the fair, you're paying $5. You are paying $5 just to enter the fair. That's your initial cost. That's what you have to pay just to get in there. And then it's gonna change depending on how many rides you ride. What is the slope? Well, you can easily see from this big and slope intercept form, the slope is 1.75. That's our slope or one in 75 hundredths. So what this means is this is your rate of change, okay? So it's a $1.75 per ride, okay? So your cost is changing so the rate of your cost let's add that the rate of cost is changing by a dollar 75 per ride all right and hopefully you're pausing these in between questions to answer them yourself so if you want to real quick pause this one and try c Okay, hopefully you pause it and come back. This one says, if Al spent $19 at the fair, how many rides did he ride? So we're, this one's a little bit opposite from what we were just doing. What we see is that they gave us $19 is what he spent. So they've given us the cost. This is C. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into our equation. And we're going to work backwards to find how many rides he wrote. So we're going to take this room and plug it in for C. So we're going to say 19 equals $1.75 R plus 5. We're going to subtract 5 from each side. And sometimes you have to do this because you don't have a graph. The graph is always a really easy way to see it. But if we don't have a graph, sometimes we have to actually use the equation. We get 14 equals $1.75 R. We're going to divide each side by a dollar seventy-five. We're going to get R equals, and then we're going to use our calculator for this. I'm going to use my calculator for this. You're more than welcome to use your calculator for this. One or fourteen divided by one seventy-five is eight. So you wrote eight 
rides if you spent $19. So this is kind of making a prediction with the equation. So we're using the equation versus using the graph because we don't have a graph. So all of these are skills you need to be able to identify slope as rate of change and the y-intercept as, as the initial value in real life situations. I hope this video helped and that you were able to work along with me and write this down and make sure you understand this. Have a great day.